Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. And this is going to be a first for me because this is going to be my first English physics video. <laughs> oh boy, we came pretty far in the last few months. Okay, we're going to start off with Newtonian mechanics, analytical mechanics. Just a few topics. If you want to see more, suggest me something. We are going to start off this video this new series with a rope sliding down a table. So how can we think about that? So imagine that this is a table and indeed it's an ugly looking one. And there's a rope up here or a snake, whatever you wish. And we are going to assume that there is no friction involved. So we are going to make this kind of easy. So if there's no friction involved, we have to uh, think about e every force that is pulling on the string, pulling on this rope. So what forces are acting on this uh, object? Well, it's just the gravitational force that is pulling it down. So let's say here's a small um, part of the rope that is hanging down. We are going to call this distance x. Hmm. Okay, and the only force that is pulling on this thing is our gravitational force with the g vector, this gravitational constant. Okay, so how are we going to define this? At first we are going to start off with the fact that a force is just mass times acceleration, so that's quite easy. And this force is a, uh, equal to some other force. So what is this other force? Like I said before, it's a gravitational force. But here is one small thing that you have to keep in mind. The gravitational force is only acting on the part of the uh, rope that is hanging down the table. So just a small portion of the rope is hanging down. So we are going to define this as follows. So this is m. Uh, no, not m. We are going to define a mass in a different way. So that's g times some mass that we are going to call rho in this case. So let's define rho. Like I said in the beginning, it's just a small portion of the rope hanging down. Hmm. Okay, it's just a small portion. Let's call the whole length of the rope just capital L. Okay, so it's some kind of a percentage. So we have to divide the smaller part by the greater part. So it's x over L. So that's the percentage of the rope hanging down times our mass, because this is also just a mass. And now we can plug this in. <laughs> what a mass. <laughs> mm. So that's g times x over l times m. And the great thing is, since there's no friction involved and stuff like this, we can cancel out those m's. And we can also rewrite this acceleration as the second derivative of this distance over time. So this is just x double prime. And since we are making physics videos, I'm going to denote this double prime as this little dot dot. Hmm. And as you might notice, that's a differential equation and one that's really easy to solve at that. So how are we going to solve this? We are going to take an exponential approach, an ansatz, you would call it in English, I guess. So we are just going to assume that we can rewrite this x as follows. x is equal to some e to the lambda t. Okay, and we are now going to solve for these roots, for those lambdas. So when we differentiate this function two times, that would mean that it's lambda squared times e to the lambda t. And we are differentiating in terms of t. And we can plug this information in. So what we end up with at first is just, okay, so that's lambda squared times e to the lambda t minus, let's bring this to the other side, just for the sake of it. And then we plug this function in, so that's g over l times e to the lambda t and this is equal to zero. Now we can factor out this e to the lambda t because we have to solve for the zeros. So this is now equivalent to e to the lambda t times lambda squared minus g over l and this is equal to zero. And since this exponential function can go to zero, uh, we have to solve for this one. So we have to find the two roots of la uh, lambda in this case. So that means that lambda squared has to equal to g over l. And now we can take the square root on both sides. 
So our two solutions, lambda 1 and 2, equal to plus minus the square root of g over l. Okay, great. We've solved for the roots and now we can plug this into our auxiliary equation. I'm going to derive all this differential equation stuff in the near future, so be prepared for this. We are just going to take it for granted at first. So let's plug this into our auxiliary equation. So x in terms of t is just now the solution of our, uh, of our differential equation. And this is some constant. Since it's degree 2, we need two constants. So that's a times e to the lambda 1 t plus our second constant b times e to the lambda 2 times t. And now we can plug our values in. So we've got now a times e to the square root of g over l times t plus b times e to the minus square root g over l times t. And this is basically our solution for this problem. But as most of the times in analytical mechanics or experimental physics, we have some initial values that we need to fulfill to get a real solution for this problem right here. So at first, we can think about this in a physical kind of way. So x at the point zero. So when t is equal to, to zero right at the start, our distance, we are just going to call it x zero. So our initial distance that this rope hang down is just x zero. Okay, and initially our velocity, so x prime of t, at the point t equals to zero, is just zero. So nothing did start to move at this point. And now we can solve our solution for this differential equation for this initial values. So that's going to be quite easy. When dealing with initial values, you should always try to solve for the easiest case. And the easiest case at the moment is just this one right here. So we get zero on one side and we can plug in zero into t. So at first let's differentiate this function right here. So x prime of t is now square root g over l times a times e to the square root g over l times t minus square root g over l times b times e to the minus square root g over l times t. And now we can plug our own initial values in. So that's quite easy. So x prime of zero has to be zero. And if we plug in zero into those t's, those exponential functions become one. So that's quite easy. So we end up with square root g over l times a minus square root g over l times b. And now we can divide both sides by square root of g over l because those are positive. g is positive and our length a length is positive, so the square root of those positive values would also be positive. Okay, so if we divide both sides by it, that would mean that a minus b has to equal to zero, and we can now add b on both sides, and what we get is just a is equal to b. And we have solved for our first initial condition, and we can plug those new informations, information into here. So. This solution to our differential equation now becomes, uh, let's factor out the a. So this is now a times e to the square root g over l times t minus uh, plus e to the minus square root g over l times t. Okay, what else can we do? Now I want to talk about our other initial condition. So let's plug this in. So now we get x of 0 has to equal to x0. Okay, and if we plug in t equals to 0 into this equation, so this exponential function becomes 1 and this becomes 1, so 1 plus 1 equals to 2. So we now know that x0 is equal to 2 times a. We can now divide by 2 on both sides since 2 isn't equal to 0 and we get that a is equal to x0 over 2. And this new information can be plugged into here. Let's see what we get. Ooh. So that now means that x in terms of t is nothing else than x0 over 2 times e 
to the square root g over l times t plus e to the minus square root g over l times t. And the great thing is we got a one half here now. And as you might know, one half times this chunk is just a hyperbolic cosine of this argument right here. So what we end up with is x0 times the hyperbolic cosine of square root g over l times t. And then we are done. We have solved our differential equations with all given initial conditions. And that's quite great. Whew, that was my first physics video. I'm also going to solve this one right here with Laplace transforms. That's going to be exciting. And the Lagrangian mechanics. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you're wondering why I'm wearing the same t-shirt for like three videos, um, I'm making a video session today. I'm on fire because I'm flammable maths. Up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya.